Okay. So my name is Ian Han. I'm a research systems librarian at the University of Arizona Libraries. So today's topic is um, I'm going to present in our uh, university's approach to using open analytics data for measure all those impact. Next slide, please. So uh, the three things I want to mention here. One is the looking at the scholarly data sets, um, not just uh, OpenX, but uh, Scopus and uh, Web of Science and uh, Google Scholar. The second thing is that uh, we want to uh, check and find out how researchers and departments matrix over the years. Um, the Of course, the related topic will be uh, related to collection management matrix. Um, on measuring how people using and citing uh, um, articles and journal usage at our uh, university. Next slide, please. So talking about locally, so the uh, uh, we want to first uh, do a couple of uh, um, topics. One is the research impact uh, by specifically looking at the uh, researcher uh, basically individuals matrix. Then of course, with that on, then we can look at the department or unit on college level. Uh, and also we can look at retraction data. Um, uh, to the libraries uh, point of view, so we want to find out the uh, the journals uh, published uh, by our researcher and uh, the journals cited by our research so that we can know how our collection management uh, usage um, traditionally, we rely on the um, vendor's data. So now we have open access, so we can have actually checking our own data in comparison to the vendor's data. Now, third, third thing is the open access. We have endorsed the open access statement uh, university-wide, so we want to find out uh, the open access journal uh, that our researchers publish in. And uh, also we want to find out um, our campus repository, how they can be, how they are exposed um, and used by uh, people, um, uh, researchers uh, uh, around the world. Certainly, we could find the predatory journals um, uh, that um, published. Um, uh, next slide, please. So actually, if you're looking for a, a, a broader scope from a national point of view, that uh, in the United States now the founders really uh, having some of the requirements. So from a, a grant compliance point of view, we want to find out the who found us and uh, how it's related to our researchers and publications. Uh, and finally, the 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 grant agencies uh, require uh, stronger uh, compliances. From the uh, either from NSF or NIH, there are certain uh, institution working already working on something that uh, uh, make having the data with available make sure that the uh, uh, compliance is uh, is uh, meet. So at the moment that uh, we have a different agency to uh, to handle this, but this could be one use case for open Alex as well. Now, well, finally, as I mentioned before, uh, that vendors. Right? We have a uh, different type of a uh, database aggregators providing uh, data. In the past, we rely on vendors data. So now with the open analytics data, we can measure how our data compared to vendors data in terms of usage uh, and also justifications uh, as well as publications. Um, next slide, please. Next slide. So uh, collection management questions, basically there's two kinds of questions. So in which journals do our researchers publish? Now, uh, another angle is that from which journals do uh, our uh, researchers cite articles? So that we can efficiently manage our collection and how the money is uh, spent wisely. Uh, next slide. So uh, our approach, here's a, the, the approach of, of, I'm having. So first of all, we I uh, go through the find out from uh, individual researchers. So I getting and validating researchers 
official legal name, use our institution LDAP service. Then after that, um, I using uh, I write my own functions uh, code that uh, search your name in OpenAlex to uh, based on affiliation. In this case, uh, as you can see the string here, uh, that's exactly the, how we match in the affiliation here. Um, besides of the um, open access institution ID, RRID, name, as well as Banner. Banner is actually affiliated uh, um, institution along with the, uh, the university. Then um, the finding is that the certain some others have more than one institution because it could be uh, in, uh, in more than just one field. So basically the, the, the code looking for more than um, affiliation and affiliation uh, others to to be able to figure out uh, the correct uh, affiliations. So uh, in the past six months, I have searched about, uh, what are dating about 400 UA affiliated authors. So for from three colleges, departments, and units. So first one is Department of Medicine, uh, 64 people. Then Banner House, uh, it's 173. And the University Libraries is 148 people. So the recall is roughly about 95% above. Um, next slide, please. Now, then... Uh, we're getting work from why once I have the author matched, I have the author ID, then uh can get in the works published by those uh, authors ID filled by year, then uh output the results, then uh by looking at the source SO column, which I can find out of where the published and uh the the source of the publications. Next slide, please. So um, for the deep researchers and department uh, matrix, so we want to, common question are, how many articles did the researcher publish last year or any years? Um, so uh, the, also the second uh, question can be answered is that what article did the researcher publish? Um, now, by uh, aggregating all the others in that department, we can find out how many articles did the department published last year or any year, and we know what kind of article, what uh, journals that are publishing. Um, next slide, please. Also regarding retraction, um, those retraction fields actually is a new field in Open Atlas. So we can actually determine the uh, retracting the article within the uh, UA affiliate authors. Then we also can compare our peer institutions to find out is that the similar rate or more or less, that kind of questions. Um, next slide, please. Um, also, by looking at the uh, the source column, we can find out the identify the potential uh, predatory journals. And uh, also we can look at the who published those uh, journals. Next slide, please. Um, so this is a how to do so. The code actually is linked here. Um, you are welcome to um, to look at the source code uh, and uh, um, and uh, comment and suggest by contact me. Um, so uh, the specific uh, uh, algorithm is running us uh, below. So basically, the the code was written by R in R. Then I have uh, some uh, Python script to be able to convert uh, the the uh, LDAP data to a CSV file. Then then I can get the department's authors by running a function. Then output the data in two ways uh, for the specific use case. Uh, I have one Excel file contains all the publications of the, that department to send to that department coordinator. Then also I can have the uh, one Excel contain the uh, researchers tab. So each tab will have the individual's publications. So those are directly providing to the departments, uh, either a researcher or uh, the, the uh, or con uh, contact person. Um, next slide, please. 
So this is an example uh, showing the uh, total publication works by uh, actually Banner Health. As you can see, it's uh, sorted uh, by the number of publication. Uh, the highest the highest one uh, is the UMC in Tucson. Um, this is just a, a example of how we, I use the data for the simple visualization. Um, next slide, please. So uh, regarding findings, so this is talking about data actually for author. So the, our data has a, a roughly about 400 authors in three college departments and a few uh, others as a testing example from other departments or units. Uh, as I mentioned before, Banner House has 173. Uh, others, Department of Medicine has 64. University Libraries has 148. Um, and, oh, okay. So uh, by creating a golden standard data set at the University Library, so basically I have the worried about all 148 authors and the recall is 95%. So uh, um, some author has both correct and incorrect affiliation simultaneously, and some author ID have both correct and incorrect authors simultaneously as well. Precision is roughly about 90%. Um, next slide, please. Um, works, uh, roughly about 600 works from the above 400 author verified. Have uh, precision uh, 98%, recall 95%. Next slide, please. Um, so this one is a specific uh, comparison of the open X with uh, Scopus. Uh, this task was performed 2023, uh, October, uh, by uh, for Department uh, for Banner Health. So we found out the open Alex has more distinct uh, works um, than Scopus has some works that uh, open Alex does not have. Um, of course, this data may not be as accurate as now because open Alex may have more data as for now. Oh, we also look at Google Scholar. As you know, Google Scholar is closed, no official API. It's very difficult to get data. Uh, next slide, please. So the issue here, we have the basically the same naming issues. Uh, so other have the same name or similar name across multiple institutions. Uh, for example, my name, uh, there's about a couple hundred at many institutions uh, uh, aggregated under the same author ID. Now, second issue is that authors with the same name in similar situations. For example, we have two Mary Finis, one in ASU and one in UFA. Those two are totally two different people. The third issue is that same author, same name author in the same institution. So in this case, we have two Kimberly Chapmans at the UFA, but they're in totally different, two different units. Um, the second issue is about same authors across institutions. For example, Bakia Tanyorwer has been working UMC banner in other institutions. So, uh, so it's fulfilled in multiple institutions as well. Next slide, I'm please. I'm going to ask you to, uh, to wrap up, please. <laughs> so what do we uh, expect more from Open Latex? Uh, the first, uh, the, the, the most important issue for us is the auditive ambiguation. Uh, so compared to the previous authors, uh, also, the uh, disambiguation issue, uh, which is November 23, this version of our is significantly improved. Um, but I think there's still a room for improvement. Um, so, either using some machine learning or manual updates. Um, um, second one was duplications. Um, there are certain works are duplicates, but that's about the same. So, it could be a deduplication. Third one is a certain repository harvesting. I think this happens only to do with Arca from my uh, 600 works point view. Uh, certain metadata uh, harvesting or chain was modified later was incorrect. Now, that's the end of my uh, talk. Any questions? Thank you very much. Um, and that's, um, I think that's a call for basically all presentations. Uh, any questions for the presentations, uh, please add them to the Q&A. Um, because I was following the schedule as given to me and there are a few surprises that uh, emerged along the way. Among others that um, we do need to finish this session um, by now. 
So we won't have an opportunity to do live q and I do apologize for that. But the Q&A is open for everyone, the, the online Q&A. Um, I'd like to thank all the presenters. I think together you've given us um, basically five applications of OpenLX. The majority of those are really also meant either directly or indirectly for use by others. So I would really invite anyone uh, who is interested in any of these applications to look out, uh, to look up the, uh, the links or the scripts and to really try it. Because in general, I think developing an application is one thing, but it really thrives if it's also used by others. So I think these are five very inspiring examples. Uh, with that, we're going to have a little bit of a shorter break to keep on schedule. Um, I'd like to, I'm going to make the executive decision to have a five minute break to allow you all to step away from your screen. And we'll reconvene at 12.41 for the last session. In the meantime, I'll switch panelists and invite all the speakers from the last session as a panelist. So we'll see you all back in five minutes. <laughs>